Welcome to Oracle Application Express Installation and Administration, Downloading and Installation. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at the steps you'll need to take to download the latest and greatest version of Oracle Application Express from the oracle.com site, and we'll take a look at the steps to install Oracle Application Express inside of your database. You can get the latest and greatest version of Oracle Application Express by going to the Oracle Technology site at oracle.com slash tech network slash index.html. You can hover your mouse over the Downloads tab and then select Oracle Application Express. Accept the license agreement and then choose which version of Oracle Apex you'd like to download. If you're only working in English, you can select the English only download. If you're going to develop languages other than English, select the All Languages download. When the zip file is done downloading, we can open it up and extract it to a directory locally on our machine. I'm going to extract this Apex directory into one of my local directories called temp. So now that I've downloaded the apex.zip file from Oracle, I FTP it to the server where my database is running, and then I run the unzip command on the apex underscore 4.2.5 file. And you can see other directories are created along with a bunch of SQL files. Before I can install the latest and greatest version of Apex, I have to blow away my existing Apex installation inside of my database. This means that if I've been working with Apex up to this point, I should not run this script. I should go to Oracle Support and get a special upgrade script for Oracle Application Express. The version of the script that you get from the Oracle Technology Network site is for new installs only. If you've been working with Apex up to this point and you want to preserve all of the work that you've done, make sure you don't run this script. Go to Oracle Support and get the upgrade script for Oracle Application Express. Since I don't have anything in my existing Apex environment, I'm just going to blow it away and start from scratch. If you look at the SQL scripts that are provided with the latest and greatest zip file from Oracle, there's a couple of scripts that have APX REMOV. These scripts remove the existing Oracle Application Express development environment from your database. The script that you want to run is this one right here, apxremov.sql. So I'm going to log in to my Oracle database as the SysDBA user and then run that apxremov script. I paused the video so you didn't have to sit and watch all of the things scroll on by the screen. But as you can see, at the end of the script, we have a successful message that says Application Express has been removed, and you must exit the SQL Plus session before running Apex INS. Apex INS is the installation program for Apex. So we're going to exit out of here. We're going to log back in, and we're going to run that Apex INS script. We have to pass it a couple of parameters. The first parameter that we pass to the Apex INS script is where the objects that make up Application Express are going to be installed. In this example, I'm going to install those objects into the sys AUX table space. The second parameter we pass is where the indexes for all of the Apex objects are going to live. I'm also going to put those in the sys AUX table space. The third parameter is a temporary table space that we need as the script is running. The fourth parameter is a virtual directory where all of the images that make up Application Express are going to live. There's very little reason to change the third or fourth parameters. You may have a reason inside of your organization to change the first or second parameters, but again, there's very limited reasons for you to change the third or fourth parameters. So again, I've paused the video so you didn't have to see everything scrolling through, but as you can see, the script has completed successfully. There is a little bit of a misnomer here. If we scroll up, it gives you the impression that you can now log into the system using this URL. You can't log in yet. Even though it says HTTP host port slash Apex, there's still a couple of steps that we have to do before your Apex environment is ready to be used. So I'm going to exit out of here, and I'm going to look at my present working directory. You can see that I'm in the home Oracle downloads Apex directory. The next script we run is going to take a parameter, and we're going to have to specify the directory, not the directory that we're in, but one directory above it. So one directory above where we are now is home Oracle downloads. That's what we're going to have to specify. So I'm going to log in to my database again, and I'm going to run another script called APX LDIMG, and that stands for Apex Load Image. The parameter I pass, again, is one directory above where I am now. So I'm not going to pass 
Home Oracle Downloads Apex, I'm going to pass Home Oracle Downloads. Now that that script's completed, there's still a couple of things that we need to do. First, let's take a look at the SQL scripts that are in that directory. And you'll see a script here called apex underscore epg underscore config dot sql. Now that that script's complete, we have two more steps to go, and we should be ready to use our new apex environment. We have to run a script called apxconf. That's going to do some basic configuration of our apex environment. Whatever password we put in here for the administration user, Oracle Application Express is going to make us change the password when we log in. So you don't want to put in anything too meaningful here because you're going to have to change it anyway. You can't also put in anything simple. If I put in a real simple password, you see that I get an error message that says password does not conform to this site's password complexity rules. Six characters, one numeric character, one punctuation character, one uppercase character. So let's do this again. We'll run apxconf and put in a password that meets all of that criteria. Now I'm asked to enter what port I'm going to listen on. I'm going to listen on 8585. One last step. We have to alter one of the users inside the database and unlock their account. So then we have to issue the command alter user anonymous account unlock. We've done everything successfully. We should be able to log into our Apex environment now. Let's go over to a browser. And in our browser, we're going to use the following URL. We're going to first specify the server name. Because I'm not using DNS locally in my network, I'm going to have to specify the IP address. But under normal circumstances, you would specify the server name where you just installed Oracle Application Express. After that, I specify the port number that I just set in my apxconf file, which is 8585, and then a slash and apex. I'm now logged into my apex environment. The only workspace that's created for me out of the box is a workspace called internal. It's sort of like when you create a new database. If you create a new database from scratch, the only table space that's guaranteed to be there is the system table space. As you use your database, you go through and you create more and more table spaces. It's the same concept with Application Express. There's always going to be a workspace called internal, and after you start using Application Express for a while, you'll create more workspaces for your applications. Password is going to be what I specified in the Apex CONF file when I ran it. And as you'll notice, I have to change it on my first use. If I specified everything correctly, the password is changed. When I click Return, I'm asked to log in again. I can now log into my Oracle Application Express environment. And if I scroll down, I can see the version of Oracle Application Express that's running, 4.2.5.00.08. And the 4.2.5 corresponds to the script that I downloaded from the Oracle Technology site for my Oracle Application Express upgrade.